Welcome back to our LinkedIn Essentials class. This module is going to focus on assessment. So for those of you who've been using LinkedIn for a while, it's time for you to pull up your profile, either on your mobile phone or on your PC, and we want to assess it. We want to see how it compares to industry best practices. And um, I will be the lead presenter in this module, but Rob O'Brien, I may be asking her for some comments as we go along. So let's get started. Um, we do want to begin with a, uh, a prayer, again, for the difficult times we're in. We want to give you hope and encouragement with this module. LinkedIn is going to be so helpful for you, um, for your job search while we're uh, in this season. So from Phil Philippines 4, 6, uh, 7, and New International Version, do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your mind in Christ Jesus. So with that lovely prayer, let's move on and let's help you make you an all-star. So the purpose of this module is really to assess your profile, red, yellow, green. So when you're done, you will have an action plan to become an all-star, to have an all-star profile on LinkedIn. So together, everyone achieves more. So I'm going to be sharing best practices, but as I do that, I want you to be doing some work. So if you've had a chance, I hope you have that handout that we asked you to print earlier on in the course, and you can use that handout to assess your profile based on 12 best practices. Red means um, it's missing from your profile. Yellow is, boy, that's a good idea. Let me make a note to improve my profile. And green means it's perfect. There's nothing more I need to do. So let's get started. There is an evolution in profile, and I, I like to use that analogy of a heart, because what you're trying to do with your LinkedIn profile is really draw in the emotion, the heart of the reader, so they're going to pick up the call, phone and call you. Um, a recruit for, you know, we want to draw in, make you distinctive, so a recruiter calls you or a networking contact calls you and talks to you about opportunities. So why an all-star? Well, the research shows that 40 times more contacts from hiring managers or recruiters versus those of you that have an incomplete profile. So an all-star, that term simply means let's get your profile complete. Personal branding is the goal. That's a fancy word to say, let's grab the emotions of the reader. Let's show them what, what what makes you distinctive? What makes you different? What makes you better than the other people that they're considering for an opportunity? Storytelling, uh, we want you to think of your profile as more than a copy and paste of the resume, especially in the about me and in the, the headline. We want you to connect the reader to your value and clarity about what you can do to help them improve their business. We also want you to think search. One more time, here we go, search optimization. We wanna help you find a balance between telling your story, but using keywords to match search algorithms, especially important in LinkedIn. Moving on. So first of all, let's Take a look at your LinkedIn profile. Go, hopefully you're, you're able to view it online. You're at your profile. And I want you to look for the section right up on top called contact information. And you're going to see your profile, linkedin.com slash in. And hopefully you have a customized URL that there's no numbers or what we call garbage to the right of your name. And if there is, we'll show you how to customize it in, in a in a few minutes. It's optional to have your phone number and contact information. Some people choose to do that because if a recruiter is interested, they want to be able to tell the recruiter how to find them quickly via the phone. But most people put their email in contact information, but make sure your email is, is current. So many clients I work with, 
their email is their work email or a former email or a hotmail that's obsolete and they change and used to Gmail, but they haven't updated their LinkedIn. So it's really important for you to make sure that that, that email is up to date. And if you need to change that, I'll show you in the demo coming up in the next module. Moving on. So, so just think a minute, the contact information, red, yellow, or green. If, if, if it's missing or it could be improved, take a corrective action to make that better. So how to personalize your URL. Look at that URL, www.linkedin.com slash in. It should just say your name. Sometimes people add a branding statement like for me, job coach. But if, you're, if your URL is not customized, it's it, make it yellow or make it red and take a corrective action to fix this. Super important for your success. Moving on, photo. The photo, so many LinkedIn profiles I review, there's no photo. And some people I work with, I'm working with a guy this week who says I'm too old to have a photo in LinkedIn. Well, you get 21 times more views with a photo and nine times more requests to connect. So you wanna think about your photo as your personal brand. So it's most of us, we use a professional headshot. We look as friendly as we can, but also others like look at Rob's picture. She's the one with the hand on her chin. She's a creative person. She's an entrepreneur. So she wants her brand to show that she's innovative and thinks outside the box. It's a marvelous picture for Rob. And then take a look at the bottom right. That's my son, Nick. He's a copywriter. He write, works for an ad agency. And he wants people to think of him as somebody more creative than anyone else they could find. So, you know, whatever your brand is, match your picture to your brand. So again, red, do you have a picture? Is your picture missing? It's red. Yellow, if you don't look friendly, if it's not a headshot, if it could be a professional headshot or a better headshot on the phone, take a corrective action. If you love your headshot, great. It's green and you're perfect. Moving on. Background picture. Oh my gosh. Take a look at the one in the upper left-hand corner. Most background pictures are the traditional LinkedIn blue where they show headshot and blue. But look at what changes when you take your picture and you add your a cool photo in the back. Look at the right upper right hand corner. This is a young millennial professional who's in the creative industry. Wonderful branding background. Bottom left, we have a writer. So an, again, a young professional who's trying to get a job as a writer. Look what she uses as her background, some, some cool pencils. And then we have Rob, my partner, Rob. Rob, you wanna say anything about your background picture? Sure, so people that are in the Salesforce ecosystem will recognize those are two of the Salesforce characters. Uh, it's Cody the Bear and Appy. And so they'll know right away that I'm a Salesforce professional because of my background. That is awesome, Rob. So in Rob's example, she's promoting her company, not her personal brand, but her company. So if you're currently employed and you wanna use LinkedIn to help promote your business, what a wonderful way to brand your profile. So how do you find these cool pictures? You can simply Google background pictures LinkedIn to find stock images. You'll find many, many links. Just play around, find one you love, find one that matches your story and add it to your profile. So take a minute, are you red? Are you that blue background and needs something better? Are you yellow where it's not quite what you, this message you're trying to send? make it better? Or are you green? Do you have a cool background picture and you're perfect? Moving on. Headline. Oh boy. Headline is so important because recruiters are using $10,000 a year to use this tool. They are typing in keywords to find talent. So this is an excellent place where you need to think like a recruiter. You need to use the keywords you find in job descriptions. So what's important here is you wanna load this headline with keywords. If you're on a PC, you can use 120 characters. If you're on a, the app, the LinkedIn app on your phone, it will take up to 220 characters. 
So the first example, we have a writer. She's looking for a job as a copywriter, a content writer, a blogger, a published writer. And then she adds a little branding, lit literary editing aficionado. So she adds some personality to that headline, just a fantastic headline. Then we have a technologist. You can see the keywords used by that technologist looking for a broad range of jobs, but very specific keywords is exactly what you want because recruiters are typing in specific keywords to find talent. Then we have Rob's again. I love Rob's um, headline. Rob, you want to talk about your headline for a minute? Rob. So what my headline talks about is that I'm a certified Salesforce admin, two times ranger. Anybody that's in the Salesforce ecosystem will know what that means. I've done a lot of badges, that means. I specialize in the nonprofit area and I'm currently serving as a managed services consultant for my current company, Cloud for Good. What I love about Rob's headline is that she is currently employed, but she puts her title at the end of her headline. Many times you'll see title at the beginning of her headline, but in this case, Rob's positioning herself for her role now, as well as for an opportunities for the future that may draw in the recruiter. So it's a very strategic headline, very, very creative. So take a minute, take a look at your headline. Do you have a headline with loaded with keywords or is it red? Or does your headline not quite have the right keywords or an old job title? Is, there, is it yellow? Is there opportunity for improvement? Or do you think your headline's perfect? If it's green, great, move on. On to the next slide. About me, oh my gosh, this is so important. This is what the re reader recruiters read. And this is what your opportunity to tell your story. This is where we don't want to copy and paste of your resume. And what I have here is a really nice example of, of a writer who does a great job telling her story, drawing the reader in, making her look distinctive, showing her passion about her profession, and once you read this fun, creative story, you're going to want to call this writer and, and talk to her about an opportunity. So feel free, if you're creative, if you like telling your story, to, to, to add a little personality to your profile. But if you're not there, we have a more traditional version where you see these words in bold help you tell your about me story that will work. So you start with who your brand. I'm an information technology service manager. Then you talk about my specialties include keyword, 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 keyword. Then you highlight your industry experience because the recruiters, that's important to them. What industries have you worked for? Notable strengths. This is where you can showcase your people skills, your soft skills, your leadership skills. Important to do so. And then specializations. If you have more keywords, just load the section with your keywords. And, and this traditional format will work for you. And say to yourself, what it, my about me, is it missing? Many, many profiles I read, the about me section is missing and that's a huge miss for you. Is it yellow? Could I have a more interesting story or blend it with some traditional writing and some storytelling writing? Or is it green? Do, I really, do you really like your about me section? Is that what you want the recruiter to read? If you feel good about it, move on, great. That, that part you won't have to worry about. About me is the most difficult part of, of writing um, a profile. So what I did is if you need more help here, come back to this slide after this workshop and, and use this outline to help you write a nice about me section. Okay, moving on. Here we go, experience. And you see me highlighting that keywords again. A tip a mentor gave me, one of the best writers in the industry said, when you put in your experience, uh, you know, for me, professional resume writer, add keywords, LinkedIn profiles, cover letters, job search, before you explain your job, job history. And the reason for that is you wanna load your profile with keywords from the very beginning to the very end of that document because search engine optimization is how you get found and the more keywords the better. Now moving on to experience. Remember the trick here is to not copy and paste the resume. 
So what I'm sharing with you is a best practice from the top writers in the industry. And they use a nice outline called, I call it scope, story, and cars. And you heard us in resume class, Rob talking about cars. So let me show you in this sample, the scope is what you do. This is what I'm accountable for. This is the challenge of my job. The story is to explain something interesting about this job. In this case, this is a winemaker. The story was the wine program was in trouble, inventories were inaccurate, tracking systems were ineffective, staff were confused, profits were small, and the resort's dedicated wine bar was in danger of being closed. Well, that's quite a story, right? And, uh, and, and then what you do is you say, here's the challenge. This is what I did to turn this program around. Here's the actions I took, inventory, education, and training, and here are the results I achieved. So you see how beautifully you can weave in your car stories into your LinkedIn profile? By doing that, you're gonna have a super winning profile that's gonna make you distinctive and stand out from others. So pause a minute, look at your experience section, look at the way you wrote it. If it's a copy and paste from the resume, that's a yellow. That's an opportunity for corrective action. If you don't have anything, any content in your experience section, just that you work for a certain company, that's a red, that's missing information. But if you feel good about what you wrote in experience, great, move on to the next opportunity. Education, boy, education you would think seems really simple, right? But make sure you add all your education. If you never got a college degree, but you took some college, add that here. Spell out your degrees, a bachelor of science, a master's degree, continuing education courses. Most important is remove your dates if it's more than 10 years. You don't want the reader to know you're 50 and older. Take out your dates in education if, if, it, if it creates potential age discrimination. So pause a minute and think, look at your education section in your LinkedIn profile. Is it red? Is it missing? Is it yellow? Do I have old dates or no dates? Or is it green? Is it perfect? If perfect, move on. Skills. This one, remember, LinkedIn is all about search engine optimization. So there's a skills list. The more skills you have, the higher probability you're gonna be found in a search. You can put a maximum of 50 skills in this section. So load this thing up. Make sure all the keywords you use in your resume are listed in this section. And there's a wonderful drop-down box here to use. So type in a keyword, look at what that drop-down box is showing you. You might find a better keyword here than you have in your resume. And if you do, go back to your resume and refresh your keywords. That's um, because LinkedIn, I think, has the best keyword list of anywhere you'll find on the planet. So take a pause for a minute and look at your skills list. Do you have a skills list or, or is it missing? If it's missing, it's red and go create one. Many times I find skills lists were written 10, 15 years ago. Make sure your skills list is fresh. So that's an improvement opportunity. You may be yellow in this section or green. Is your skills list great? Is it a long list, more than 20? Heading to 50? If, if you're green, perfect, move on. Okay, here is a new trick for your LinkedIn profile. It's called skill prioritization. Remember how we talked about LinkedIn? It's clickworthy. Make your profile clickworthy. So I'm a recruiter. I find you. I'm interested. I'm looking at you on my mobile phone. The top three skills in your skills list is all I see on my mobile phone. So take a look at your LinkedIn profile. Look at your top three skills. Are those the ones you want that recruiter to see? If no, you want to go click on this, the, the, add it, the pencil mark. You want to look at these, what we call these push pins. You see them to the left of resume writing and job search coaching. Click on those push pins, move that content down and look at the words on your bottom. Click on the push pins in the bottom and move the words up. The, I'll, I'll demonstrate that in the next module, but it's very important, super important that you have the top three skills you want to use to promote yourself in the top three of this list. So pause a moment. Are you red? Do you not have the right skills prioritized? Are you yellow? Do you want to change those skills? 
or is it perfect? Let's move on. Recommendations. Oh boy. I would say that 90% of the LinkedIn profiles I look at, and I look at many on a weekly basis, have zero recommendations, or the recommendations are over five years old. For job search, you want to have a goal of three recommendations that are fresh, that are within the last five years. And there's two reasons you want that. You want it because recruiters read them. They find it valuable to see what people say about you. Also, you're just a number in LinkedIn. And, and to boost your score, to boost that weighted factor so you're found more frequently in a search, recommendations add value to your number. So pause a minute. Um, do you have no recommendations or old recommendations? Are you red? Or are you yellow? Do you have one, but you could get more? Or are you green? Do you have at least three recommendations in the last five years? Another reason why these recommendations are so important is letters of recommendation are obsolete. Don't, don't go into a job interview with a folder of letters of recommendation. It's all about, remember, your digital story, your digital presence. So, so this is a great opportunity for you to make a fantastic improvement to your profile by adding recommendations. Last, um, there is a blue button to the right of your picture on um, profile that's called accomplishments. And there's so much you can add here, publications, patents, courses, projects, honors and awards, test scores, languages. Don't forget this section. D uh, take a pause, make sure, look at your profile. Anything special you've done, make sure you add it to the profile. So think, are you red? Do you have some things you've done that you haven't had it added in your profile? Take a, make a plan to fix that. Are you yellow? Have you taken some courses recently that could be added and you forgot about them and, and didn't list them? It's super important to list your continuing education courses. Are you green? Pretty good here. You've got everything loaded. If so, um, that's, that's a green, that's perfect, okay? Now, we just went through 12 best practices to be an all-star in LinkedIn. We're gonna take a break now, and what we're gonna do is come back, and I'm gonna demonstrate for you how to edit your profile right real time in the LinkedIn tool, and my partner, Rob, is gonna show you some cool LinkedIn activities that is gonna help you accelerate your job search. So thanks, hope you enjoyed this. Look forward to seeing you in module four.